back to the Listen, vlog. So I have here with me Danny. Uh -huh. And so today we're on the plane right now, Delta. Yeah. And we're headed to the first date in uh, the trip during the trip. Um, the first place we're going to is Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee. And so she's part. She's leading the trip. And so I'm here with all the other students that are going on the trip. And I'm gonna document the entire journey so from day one to day seven. So stay tuned. We land at midnight. Their time. Their their time. Yes. Check you guys later. I just got off the plane. We just made it to Memphis, Tennessee. Um, the weather is really hot. I'm not used to this because I'm from Los Angeles, but I'm breathing hard because it took a while to get off the plane and it's hot. But yeah, just made it to Memphis, Tennessee. It's about 12 midnight here. So I think um, they're about two hours ahead of LA. It's the first state that we touched down in. So I'll keep you guys posted on our advances. And that's it. See you in the next clip. Check my face. Me and Yari. We're both friends. We both friends. We're 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 both friends. we to get our bags and then head to the hotel because it's 12 midnight so we got an early day in the morning um, in Memphis, Tennessee so I'll check back with y'all a little later on do you have an announcement or anything you want to say? want to introduce yourself? <laughs> <laughs> that is? it's hurting it's still hurting huh? is everyone so shy from the camera? Oh. This music is off. They act the fool. Yeah, I don't act the fool. See, that's not me. <laughs> okay, guys, so we're in Memphis waiting for our, our bus to take us back to the hotel. No, I think we're actually going to get something to eat first. Everybody's hungry. All they ate was like peanuts on the plane. So we're hungry, so we're going to get something to eat and then head to the hotel. But this is the crew that we'll all be journeying through Memphis, Alabama, Mississippi. And Louisiana. Okay, guys. So we just got we just got our cars yes, for the trip. We got two Dodges for the team, and we are headed back to the hotel to pick up the rest of the students, peers, constituents, have you? And then we're heading down to. Oh, we're going on a heritage tour. We're going on a heritage tour. So we're going to go to Slave Haven in uh -huh. Memphis. We're going to go to the Lorraine Motel, which is where Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. Right. We're going to go to the Mason Temple, which is where he gave his last speech. I've been to the mountaintop. Uh, we'll go to the St. Jude Hospital. We'll go to a lot of different places that um, a lot of history has taken place. Yeah. All right, so, I, you know, of course, I'm vlogging the entire experience, and I'll keep you guys in tune on what we're doing and take you along on the journey, so... Stay tuned, keep your wigs tight, and let's go. Anything else to say? Sankofa. Hashtag Sankofa, or hashtag Journey to Sankofa. So to give a little context, the trip is called Journey to Sankofa. Sankofa is a Twi language, is Twi language of Ghana, which means to go back, return. Um, so essentially we are taking a civil rights tour where we're going back to Take our history. Yeah, we're, we're researching and we're experiencing our history, which from Africa began in the South, you know, Virginia, Tennessee, Alabama, so forth and such. So we're starting here in Tennessee. We'll be hitting Mississippi, Alabama, and Louisiana. Um, so that's a little background on what we're doing. So today we're going to Mason Temple and we're going to a, a tour of Lorraine Hotel and a few other things so that's what's going on for today so i'm gonna take you guys on the journey be sure to like subscribe and comment tell a friend about the video and i 
I see you in a few minutes. <laughs> hey, what am I supposed to say now? I don't know. Let me know when you record. Let's hear that, uh, that southern, southern accent. accent. Uh, southern accent. Oh, yeah, we out here in that, that Memphis, boy. We out here in the south side. You know what I'm saying? We out here finna cook us some sugar cane. You know? Uh, you know, chase black excellence with unyielding tenacity. Black excellence. Indeed. <laughs> So once again, how are we today? Yeah. Wonderful. My name is Sakita McKinley. I will be your tour guide. We welcome you to the Heritage Tours African American Tour Site today. Our uh, wonderful assistant will be uh, sharing with us and writing with us today. What we're going to do is walk over to Claiborne Temple. I'll tell you about some things happening over there. We'll go inside and you can look at the new plaza. First of all, we'll let you in, uh, introduce our young intern. Tell them who you are, darling. My name is Kylie, and I'm the intern for the summer. Intern for the summer, all right. California, California, here we are. So here we are in Tennessee. And I don't know how many of you know about uh, some of the situations uh, with Dr. King being here in Memphis as to why he was here in the first place and what caused him to be here during the time that he was assassinated. But Claiborne Temple is uh, a historical building where most of the organizing went on for the civil, for parts of the civil rights music, I mean civil rights uh, activities. So Dr. King had been called to Memphis uh, to help the sanitation workers. They came, they were trying to organize, the situations were deplorable. If you can just imagine grown men working for families and working for one dollar a day wages. These men had organized here at Claiborne Temple and called for Dr. King to come and help them organize a strike. But we want you just to take a look at the new plaza that was just erected for the I Am A Man a symbol and the men that work with the sanitation strike along with Dr. King's assistant. We'll walk into Claiborne Temple if you want to do that and to see where lots and lots and lots of historical uh, organizing went on in this building and in most of the churches around town. under construction. It had gone unkept for a long time, but some citizens in Memphis decided that it was time for them to breathe new life into the space uh, for its historical value, and so uh, that's what they're doing now with this space. So you'll see it's under construction, but uh, they've got some plans for it. Here at Claiborne Temple, which uh, you know, as the clip before shown, um, was very instrumental in um, the life and time of Dr. Martin Luther King, where you know the issues with the sanitation workers and uh, with the, the strike that was here, and this is recently been created uh, in commemoration of the 50th um, uh, supposed celebration of. Fascination here in Memphis, Tennessee. So this is the W. Oh yeah, we are close. We family, so it's all good. This is the W. C. Handy uh, Home and Museum. Now, many people want to know, well, when did W. C. Handy start playing music? Why did he start playing music? How did he start playing music? Well, he was born into a family of preachers, hmm. ministers, 
You might say Southern Baptist ministers, not typically Southern Baptists, but they were in the South and they were mostly African American Episcopal uh, church members or Baptists. Uh, and they, they played and joined until several of the organizations split. But uh, W.C. Handy grew up playing music in the church. So he started out with the pump organ and eventually went on to play and began to play and, and be paid money to play even as a young person. W.C. Handy, you'll see him here with Ethel Waters. You'll see him with Bessie Smith. You'll see him with Ed Sullivan, Cab Calloway. Dizzy Gillespie, all kinds of folk that were world-renowned. W.C. Handy, Louis Armstrong, you see him there. And so just a, a wealth of history. He actually had saved money when he first uh, left home to go to college and had started taking some classes. But that music, those gigs were calling him. Right. Yeah. Bill Street was calling his name. And ultimately, what we know is that you're going to learn. You don't have to be limited to how you learn or where you learn, so you continue to learn right. whether you're in traditional schooling or not. But he was about making that money, and that's what he ended up doing. He sacrificed that actual school, uh, but not his education and not the knowledge, because he also became a uh, professor uh, over at AMM College in, in uh, Alabama, and you'll see that on the wall over there. So education was important. But he was able to make a, 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 an educated choice about where we go and we spend all this money to go to school and we spend this time inevitably up to get out of school to make money or do a job or whatever have you. So he's making money. He's making most money, more money than a lot of the professors or whatever have you. So it just made sense for him to do what he did. Mm -hmm. Some people didn't agree with it, but um, they got their own walk to walk. Right. Everybody's got their own walk to walk. Indeed. This would have been like the slave cabins uh, in the back of the people who, it's just a replica though, but it was people who were working on the land or in the house or whatever. It could be a, a two families. Wow. In one little shotgun room. It could be two families. You know. And so that was another thing that at uh, W. C. Handy's house, we talked about five people living in that house. Mm -hmm. It was only two bedrooms, outdoor plumbing, and the kitchen and the parlor. So if you can just imagine, but probably two families would live there. In a real slave house, there were no wooden floors. They walked in, they slept on dirt, but unfortunately they got tired of sleeping and walking on dirt, so they began to make everything out of wood. That meant including the bed, the baby bed, the basket, the table stand over there, and a the chair. There wasn't no fancy outhouse for them, so they had to use what we call a bucket or a slop drum. Slop drum. There wasn't any... There wasn't any electricity or gas for heating or any of that. And I told you there were no windows, so I guess you could say you can imagine the cold winters and the hot summers. There were up to eight to ten people who stayed in a slave home. That meant almost up to five families. Everybody was sleeping in this one bed, so that meant what was yours was theirs and theirs was yours. This would be the end, but this is the beginning of your tour. <laughs> hey guys, so I wanted to do a check-in. So we're still in Memphis, Tennessee, and we just got out of the Berkeley State Museum, which I wasn't allowed to vlog in there, you know, for obvious reasons, but the Berkeley Estate was a um, safe haven for slaves. So it was a very integral part of the Underground Railroad, and there was a the Berkeley family who would allow slaves to come in, and, he, and they would uh, come here for refuge, um, you know, and be able to be, you know, nursed and, you know, have home and food, and then they would be able to go underneath the house and then go to, um, to freedom through the Underground Railroad. Um, but yeah, I wasn't able to go entire that one let you guys know what was happening in the Berkeley family was white correct yes they're from Germany yeah so it was a family from Germany who owned the home and they allowed slaves to come in um, seek refuge and find shelter and be led through the Underground Railroad so oh, hello. Hi. it's Elaine Turner Hi. The proprietor of the Heritage Tours also, the dry drivers, this is his mother. This is one of those revolutionary women that we talked about who has a marketplace around town. 
her sisters and her, uh, uh, some of the civil rights fighters in this town for us. Okay, I hope y'all enjoyed the tour. We did. Yeah, good, good, good. Good. All right. So they're on their way to lunch now really okay. and over to the Civil Rights Museum, but they came okay. back to get their, uh, their bands. And okay. Great, great. So y'all been on quite a journey, huh? Yes, ma'am. So where else have you been? This was our first stop. First stop. Okay. Yes. So okay. Where you going? We'll go to Mississippi, and then we'll go to Alabama and Louisiana. Oh, that's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be quite an experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. Are you guys going to see that Underground Railroad Museum there? There. It's where is where is it's that in one Montgomery? It's in? Oh, it's in yeah. Montgomery. It's a, uh, well, it's the um, lynching memorial. Lynch, uh -huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh -huh. It's a lot to see down there. Wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, Selma, y'all going to Selma too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Man. I was on this Selma march. Oh, oh, so wow. that oh, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. You hear that, right? You hear that. So that's history. That's, that's history, history, yeah. You got it right in your midst. Yeah. Oh. Hey. I remember you telling us about how you were trying to be arrested. Oh. <laughs> so somebody asked, he was like, um, well, you had the opportunity to clear it, and you were just like, oh, no. I have that with pride. That's right. That's right. Don't let this stay. Because I was going to park in that restaurant parking right here. Oh, well, this is the whole. This is the museum I parking. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Right now, so <laughs> 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 he, he said, "I get it." My arms and my back are hurt. Okay. Did you put on sunscreen? No, I didn't. And I have some too. Okay, so we're still in Memphis. They was arguing me and got actually done. Dre got burned, and I was like, I'm not, I'm not happy you got burned. But Sorry, y'all. I told Passed you. Out. We need sunscreen. We do. So like, we're stopping for lunch. We're going to a barbecue peeled. spot. You know, I mean, it's and only it, it right when you're in Memphis, Tennessee, to go to a barbecue place. So we're ready to get this barbecue, and then we're going to go over there um, to the Lorraine Motel where Dr. King was assassinated in 1968. So we're here now at the Lorraine Motel. I got you. I'm sorry. Hey guys, so we just wrapped up. We just wrapped up. Oh yeah. Say hi everybody. Hey. So we just wrapped up our first day in Lou where are we at? Memphis, Tennessee. Um, we had a chance to go to Bill Street, um, Mason Temple, uh, passed by a lot of different monuments. We went to um, the Burkle home and then we went to um, Lorraine Motel. And so we're heading out to go get something to eat and then pretty much take it in for the night. Tomorrow we have the three hour drive to Michigan. I'm sorry, not Michigan. We have a three hour drive to Mississippi and that's where we'll continue day two. Uh, there. So we're gonna eat. I'll probably check in with you guys later on. Or I may just see you tomorrow uh, on the way to Mississippi. Man, I tell you. Please do. Where are we, Danielle? Enough history. Girl. Who are you? Can you introduce yourself a little bit? Hi, my name is Danielle Harris, also known as Danny, depending on who you are to me. Um, sure. <laughs> was I petty? But um, we're on the famous Bill Street um, in Memphis, Tennessee. You can hear a lot of blues and jazz and different music walking down this street. There's a lot of history in this area. Um, so yeah, you should come check it out. It's a beautiful area, beautiful people. Yes. Thank you.